Welcome back to the channels Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluters, Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud, available on Amazon. In this part, we will keep the reading of the Chapter 5 MY 15 Years and The Butterfly Effect. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Let's go. I like the illusion he made to the film Elysium which shows the whole world poor and overpopulated, but with everyone coping with information technologies, and in contradiction the few rich people live on an artificial satellite that orbits the Earth, with access to everything that is modern and luxurious. Curious and funny the video he made of how everyone in this dystopia of fiction speaks English, but the rich on the satellite speak French among themselves, as if it were a more noble language, while on Earth the poor speak a lot of Spanish, an allusion to the xenophobia of some rich countries towards Latinos. I laughed a lot when he set up a dialogue setting up the three languages and when no one else understood, he got a Klingon to solve the issue. Note, Klingon is a fictional language created from an alien race of the same name from the Star Trek TV and movie series. That's nerdy as it gets. And the boy was a nerd lord, with knowledge of everything you can imagine. So many times I remembered my frustrated attempt to get Leandro to call me at that moment as a test for the supposed possibility of messages coming from the future. I had almost convinced myself that this was all possible and that it was much more than just a series of coincidences. I remembered an episode of The Big Bang Theory when the two central characters, two very nerdy scientists, are signing a cohabitation agreement and agree on a clause that says that if either of them ever make up the time travel, they should go back to that moment and tell how it is managed to do it. They look at the empty space for a few seconds and nothing. One of them comments, that was frustrating, and continued to read the contract. The comedy, of course, was quite happy on the scene as what was already predictable becomes comic with the frustrated expressions of the two. So after all, any kind of trip, message, whatever, over time would only really be possible forwards, as Einstein's theory of relativity already predicted. At that moment, I was determined that I would not believe in it any longer, that the dreams and voices were only small delusions, coincidences of minds too young and too fanciful. And, finally, whether or not I would write about the oppression of the system about us young people, future workers slash slaves, did not matter if the motivation came from a message of the future or a delusion, collective, mine and Marcos. I sympathized with the cause, apparently many other people attending the cloud, too, so I would continue to do so. I slid my computer mouse to start the process of turning it off when a message pointed to the corner of the screen. I hesitated a little to click to open because I had spent hours there and wanted to lie down before dinner, but something told me to open and read it. I clicked and to my surprise, practically undoing all my decisions I made just now, it was a message from Leandro asking for my phone number to call me. Note, ah. Uh. How come at this time all talking to him via internet never gave my phone to him? In the end, coincidentally or not, he did call me anyway. We talked about my latest blog posts and about some political situations that were happening in the world that seemed to have come out of the movies I commented on. Youth rebelling in countries in Asia and Africa against authoritarian governments. Other young people are also appearing in Europe and the Americas asking for changes in the economic policies of their countries. Was there a synergistic relationship between these events and the dizzying growth of access to my blog? Then I shot. I found today the channel of a great YouTuber. His name is Vinny Mayo. How did you know? The guy is bursting around here too. I even heard from a rumor that maybe the government takes his channel out of the air, but I don't know if it's true or if that's even possible. Wow. What a frill. Are they also watching my blog? I laughed. I don't know, Mare. Changing the subject. I saw on your profile that your 15th birthday is coming. It's true. I'm getting old. More laughter. Are you going to have something special? I was thinking for a while, for I had not one day been talking to my mother about it, and as soon as we talked about who I'd like to invite, I thought about him. Again came that feeling of being inside a game played by someone else. An unwilling pawn. I wanted to get back in control of the situation. After all, I wished he had called and wanted to invite him. 
is it's so important to find out whether we are being determined by force majeure or by making free choices. At that moment, it was the pleasure of his voice that matters. I answered, Yes, Will. You come, won't you? It was imposing the way of speaking, but since I wanted to control the situation, I did not want to leave much room for his choice. Will it be? I wouldn't miss it. Laughter from both of us was the way to end the conversation. Note, ooh -hoo. we got what we wanted. My mother and I went back to talking about the 15-year-old party. I gave her a list of the people I wanted to invite. Most of them were schoolmates. Despite the small petty disputes from day to day in my school, we were a relatively close-knit class. There are some mean girls in there, but even they could be cool when they were ready. It was funny how to have a pair of breasts at age 14 seemed so important to some, and while it was more relevant to hide the little bit of femininity due to whatever personal repression. I invited Leandro, of course, as you already know. Marcos was also on the list, despite my mother's reservations. She still thought he would be out of place since we were not together anymore. I explained to her again that she had nothing to do with it. I let my interest in Leandro escape to her, who for a change discreetly gave advice about older boys, but without looking super protective. After all, she trusted my actions and choices. Note, why did my mother decide to give this advice now? We had had this conversation a long time ago. Sometimes, Mare, our greatest heroes are the real villains of a lifetime. What do you mean, Mom? We were interrupted by my father, who had just came home from work. Hi, dear ones. He kissed us and sat with us. What are you talking about? We looked at each other, and she let me respond. Well, Dad, I was telling Mom that I kinda like an older boy. How old are Mare? He asked cautiously. He's 17. Leandro, you met him on your anniversary. He is a friend of Cousin Lucas. Oh, I remember him. Well articulated. He's not that older, after all. I agree. Mama said, but you still have to be careful. Of course. Daddy said with some condescension. Dad, Mom. It's me, Mare. Look like they were talking to someone else. I know, my dear. That was Mom. Something is saying in my head that I must be more present in your personal life, look for more about your blog, and everything else. Yeah, Mare? Completed Dad. We admire your independence, but we feel we need to be more present in your life. I think I understand. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Continuing to support the channel's Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.